like it's either that one yeah. or any of them. Well, you'll know when it says one, two, or three that it's yeah that or that. Okay, guys. Well, so we're here at Port yeah. Mac, day three. Day three. And it's a lay day, and this is what the girls get up to on lay day. They work their asses off. Drinking coffee. <laughs> and tea. And they are doing spreadsheets and working stuff out. Say hello over there, Kerry. Say hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so it's never ever really a day, like we've got a list of things to do today. We have to um, tie some bottom bouncing rigs today because we've only got a few of those left. Uh, we could probably give the um, old yeah. boat a bit of a lick and polish after all the fish we brought into that thing yesterday. She's a bit smelly today. Yes, we need to book some flights. Why are we booking flights, Trace? We're going to the Antenna Awards in Melbourne. And why are we going there? Well, Team Just a Gill has been nominated as the best recreation and outdoor program for the year, for 2020. How awesome is that? Blimmin' exciting. Yes. So yeah, we're going to go down there, you know, if we don't win an award, that doesn't matter. We've been nominated, there's six nominations and there's a truckload of people yeah, who are eligible for that award. award. So I'm excited. Are you excited, Jules? I think it's, it'll be freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be really good. It'll be good fun too, just like for a few of us to, to go together and, and do something. And, and it means we've got to wear a frock. Yeah, I was just going to say frock up. <laughs> We got a frock up, oh gosh. Well, we got to do the red carpet walk at the start. Oh. So that's on the program, red carpet walk. <laughs> well, that would be really cool, won't it? That'd be awesome. We need to make these choices because if we have to go and buy mono, we have to do it tomorrow. We do, and you're right. Yeah. So we don't have any 10. We have eight, but well, we, we don't need, have We ten. need to get some 10. Okay, so we Yay, have to... we get to go to the fishing shop tomorrow. Oh, holy crap, that's going to take hours. Well, they do say. I hate shopping and I hate going to a fishing shop. We know, Vera. You're a pain in the ass. Just, just you and I will go. Yeah. A trade show a cup? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Awesome. Sport, sport. She can stay home and do the housework. She needs to learn how to do that. So we need to get some 10 kilo line. 10 kilo line. And we're going to change some of those barrel rods over. Over to Are 10. We? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll back them up with braid because we know we want to get on the shelf and, and try for a blue eye and a heart hooker. Okay. And the plan, <laughs> the plan is whenever we can go onto the shelf, we don't use the, the 10s and the 8s until then. Yes. Because we won't get big enough fish. fish. So we stick with the, the 6, the 4 and the 3 while we're fishing local. <laughs> yeah. All right? Yes. And we need to make sure that we've got everything spooled correctly for tomorrow. Okay guys, here we are on day four, another lay day. Another one. But this gives us the chance to get all this stuff done. So we're just trying to uh, tie up some wind on leaders today because we're a little bit short on wind on leaders because we lost a bit of gear. <laughs> <laughs> so We didn't lose it, the fish stole the it. The fish stole it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so Kerry, see how that's, you've got to leave a little bit of room yeah. because otherwise it'll cut it off. Yeah. Turn it around. Now, yeah. if you crimp that other side now at that same, it'll actually start to curl. Yeah. So you put it in that way. So now, turn it round like that and then around this way. And crimp that other side. Jules is in charge. So, and we just cut our mono back. This is, this is the worst ones. Like so, our trusty lighter. And we just burn that end off. Like so. And don't touch that end, because it'll burn your fingers, it'll stick to you. So if you can leave it in there, um, just better. 
like that, and then we'll just put like three or four into each bag. So there's one. Okay, so that's what Kerry's doing with the wind on leaders. Yep. I've got the job down here with the skirts, and we're doing the silicon spray, make them all nice and slippery and shiny for the fish. And trace over here is... I'm just top shotting some rods, so we're not going to take two fours out um, tomorrow. We're going to take two fours, two sixes and a three. So I'm just stripping back the top shot on two of the fours we used, because we did all fours the other day. Um, so, and we'll take the four with us, because if we're not getting fish big enough to go so six kilo line class, we'll just put four back on. In charge of cleaning the rods once Trace is done there. She's just out at the boat she, at the moment. She's so. just putting some... Cleaner on the reels and just giving them a bit of a waterproof coating because <laughs> Port Mac, even on a good day, you yeah, tend to have waves over the <laughs> reels. But yeah, we've got quite a good little production line going. Depending on how well I can do these, of course. At last, we're back on the water. Good morning, guys. Day five. Good morning. Hey, what are you up to, Jules? Empty the esky. All the gross stuff in the bottom. Do my morning squat. Ah, oh, very good. Fish and woman style. Get up. Very. <laughs> Gonna have plenty of muscle from this. So we've got Jules, we've got Kerry. Skip. Good morning. You're a bit in the dark there, Skip. Yeah. I've got nice early start, which is good. Hopefully it's okay. We need to poke our head around the corner yet. We may be going home to bed. <laughs> There's no waves coming over the breakwater, so that's got to be a good sign, don't you reckon? Yeah. And today is my first day out, so really looking forward to it. Girls, got your seatbelts ready? Hang on, I'll just get a little bit more of that. It's always difficult fishing at Port Mac because you really can't tell what the water is going to do until you get out there. We've had two really bad days, two days of no comp due to the swell. So we kind of just put our head around the wall and it was a lot nicer than we expected. The further out we got, the better it was. It looked like it was going to be another awesome day on the water. Before the break, We'd headed out for day five at Port Mac. We'd had two lay days in a row because of swell. The swell has dropped dramatically, but it's still a little bit lumpy out there. There were bait balls everywhere. We decided, you know, nothing to lose. Let's have a shot. This rough weather, maybe it brought the barrels in. There's some good markings underneath these schools on the sounder. So we set the barrel gear up and set to trying to catch us a barrel. Birds are diving here. Look at that beautiful sunrise. So Trace, what are we doing at the moment? So we're just off the boat ramp. Can't give it up. And uh, we're only on 40 metres of water, but we've got these huge, massive bait balls coming through. So you filmed the bait balls? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we've got these massive bait balls coming through. And you can just see by what we call that flutter on the top of the water. So we're just going around them and seeing if we can hook up. There are some good uh, marks underneath them, some good fish. So, you know, it's going to be luck of the draw. We've had two rough days, so hopefully that's for the barrels and with the bait. Oh, good. So, um, so yeah, those lines go off, oh my god, we'll be in like flint. <laughs> we got a on each There wasn't much in the way of birds diving, but we could see these flutters on the surface and they were nice and dense. They shimmered like diamonds. The video just doesn't do it justice. Nice little bait ball there. And the sun glints on it. It's a nice flutter. It's a diamond flutter, that one. A diamond. That's what you call those. They're diamond flutters. Why is that, Jules? Look at that. 
Look at the flutter. Have a look at this beautiful rainbow. Per perfectly formed. That is awesome. We were hoping to find a barrel at the bottom of that rainbow, but it didn't happen. We couldn't find any tuna. So we thought we'd go and do a bit of bottom bouncing. We needed to catch some species because we dedicated day two to tuna only. It was time to get some species on board. They're worth 100 points and they don't have to go line class. So there is quite a selection of fish that we can capture. We're in 100 meters, bottom bouncing with size eight sinkers and we're looking for a flathead. It's not what we're after. As beautiful and as big as they are. These are a butterfly gurnet. And they are actually really good eating. But it's not what we're after. They don't come with points. The locals call them latchets and think they're rubbish fish because they get so much good fish down here. But we'll eat them. Jules has a worm. This worm has to eat regularly. Now Ren's not on board, she's the food Nazi. Probably is a second breakfast time. Want to stay here? Carrie's nearly out. How about Wade? No, move. Okie dokie. Oh, sorry. Oh, she's got burning. So you have to fish all day, Carrie. All day. All day. All day. All right. Challenge on. These are also a gurnard, oh, well and we haven't actually tried to eat these ones because they have some very, very vicious spikes on them. And if you get spiked, it can stuff your whole day up. So we tend to just de-hook them and let them go. We found a few key points to successfully bottom bounce. Number one, all have the same size sinkers. We're using tens because it's 100 metres deep and it can get to the bottom quicker. Number two, Jules backs us up or someone sits in the driver's seat and continually backs the boat up so that our lines are always hanging straight down. Like a gun boot. It's probably a gun boot. With this strategy, we usually all tend to hook up at the same time. We also use circle hooks. That way, the fish catches themselves. It's very hard to strike at 100 metres deep. Or Paternoster rig does the trick. We don't use swivels or beads because we lose too many, so we just do them as quickly and cheaply as possible. Oh, nice, Gurnard. It's a skinny one. Gurnard's all round for everyone. Here he got two. Tracy Bradford has one on there as well, and of course, I have one. So it's time to move our spot slightly. Now this looks a little bit more promising. It's given us a bit of a head nod too, so hoping for something that does carry some points. Oh, a nice size gurnet. Must be one must be pulling the other way. Look at that. So Kiri's uh, 
pulled up a Gernard and Jules had a double header of Gernard and we've still got Trace coming up. Not a feeling Trace doesn't like this bottom bouncing very much. So you got two as well, Trace? Yeah. Awesome, Jules is going to net them for you. Well, I don't need to tell you, as much mm -hmm. fun as they are, there's no bloody points in there. Oh, nice. Still not quite what we're after. We are after a flathead, but uh, we don't mind the old gurnard for a bit of a chew. What's the boat limit for a gurnard? No boat limit, no size limit. Are they good sizes? They are good sizes. Don't let them touch you. That's a nice big gurnard. Oh, very nice. Woo. Nice fish. Oh, that's a beautiful. Yeah, we're gonna get a flathead this time. Before the break, we're out in the 100 metres bottom bouncing. We need to get some species on the boat, but we're just not doing very well. We cannot get past the gurnard. It takes a little while for that sinker to hit the bottom at this depth. And theoretically, they should all hit the bottom at the same time. And theoretically, we should all hook up at the same time. Well, that's the thought. We really need some points off of this next drop. Otherwise, we're going to go in with a duck. and come down one more time. The day was getting away, we haven't got any points in the boat, we haven't caught a tuna, we've stayed dedicated to bottom bouncing today, and we're gonna go in with our tails between our legs and very unhappy girl, because we've got nothing to go on the weighing table. ready, even clearly when, she, when she's not. Did, we could not escape those gurnard. So it was easy to be back in at weigh-in on time. And it looked like we weren't the only ones who'd struggled today. There were not many fish at all to be weighed in. Oh well, that's fishing. And there's another day tomorrow. Okay, here we are at day six. We're just on the water. Beautiful sunrise. Yeah, we've got... Kerry's getting those out. Jules, Jules, what's happening today? Putting the outriggers out. What are we doing, though? We're going to tag and release the tuna. Oh, 
Six. What's your expectations today? Well, I would expect today, um, hopefully we can get something big enough to go line plus gusset and gilded on the six, um, because we haven't got any points on the six, and if we can tag and release 30 odd fish today, I'd be really happy with that as well. Cool. We did 25 the other day, and we got extra two small pools, so we should be able to get back to the water way quicker than we were earlier in the week. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. It's sloppy this morning, but uh, it should get better as the day goes by. So I've got my three on standby, but when it's rough like this, it's just the waves going to break it. So we'll just tuck that away until uh, she flattens off the surface. Hope for the best. I hope for the best. Kerry, what are you going to do today? Catch fish. Catch fish. Lots and lots and lots of fish. Oh, awesome. uh, and for me, I'm going for points. Yeah. So I think for the moment, Lightline fishing is all about drag settings. It's the most important thing that you need to consider okay, and get next right. One. So do you check the drag them right up? See, me bad. Yeah. Okay, so me bad. When you let the line out, we put the drag up to full set, which is preset, and then we back what it up. What was the second bit. one? Hey? Ten, she said ten, not a ten. Oh. What was that one? Yeah. Oh, that was mine. Oh, and the one. I did that one. So yeah, so when I pick up the knife, the first thing I'm going to do is push the drag right up to how you've set it at full. Okay. Because you back them off with the fish to take it, right? That's right. Yeah. So that one I couldn't even pull it out. No. Yeah. So who set that one up? Me, because I did it with it, not on the full. The better the drag is set, the easier it is on me because it's the less doubles that I have to tie. If that drag's not right, that fish is just going to snap that line every time. Heaps of bait fish around here. We're going to put some on that's a bit more like, um, a bit more like pillies, some divers, some kumi. What do you want to see if we can pull something up? We just sat around having fun, huh? Well, day six didn't go according to plan. And something we've never experienced before happened. But that's going to take up all of next week's episode. So make sure you tune in. Just a girl. Out.